All right, we're calibrating the vacuum tester. There's our metered orifice. There's five. And plug, we've got 25. All right. All right, we've got two different pins here. These both test the same in both of these two cases. Uh, that's my old case. It's bad. This one is the one we're going to use. But to test the servo pin, since there's no real information on this online, this hole here, you can see the pin. And I'll move it. So you can see, if I back it out, there's the front of it where it hits the band. There's the first land. And there's in between. There's the second land. So we're going to be in between these two lands is where we want to test it. And there's a couple ways to do this. Well, first one we're going to do is just plugging the hole since this pin is hollow plugging the hole in the back that is open right here. And we're going to use our testing block that we made to cover this passage, like so. All right, and then we'll get this turned back on. All right, so finger over the hole. Got that in the right place. And you can see we've got about, well, let me get a better angle, a little over 15 there. And I'm going to move this back and forth in between the two lands. Um, and I probably got it in the wrong place now because I'm trying to film at the same time. But we're getting uh, 15 and a little less, about 12 to 15 inches of mercury on this case with this pin. All right, and then we've swapped out cases. This is the old one, which you can tell because that's not supposed to look like that. That is material that's all worn away. So definitely something you wanna check when you're checking out your case. Here's the good one. Looks pristine. And that's from the center support uh, moving back and forth. Um, but anyways, we've got our setup, same setup here with, where'd I put that pin? Uh, still on the other one, I think. Oh, got to get the pin out of the other one. There's our pin. And I'll slide that in. Tester's on. And let's see where we are here. So you can see that one's testing a little bit better. And when we did this test wet, uh, it was actually more significant. We were seeing like, well, under 15 with the one case and up up to 23 with the other, with, with either pin. So the reason I wanted to take a video of this and actually show it, I uh, actually had to, Ended up emailing Sonics to get an answer about this, and what they said was the 15 to 16 is usually about right where the OE sits brand new. I consider this to be acceptable. When you start seeing numbers lower than 15, it's a sign of light wear starting. I find if I have a reading of about 10 a drop-in valve, uh, meaning the Sonics valve that has, and I don't have it in front of me, but the Sonics valve has two Teflon seals around it. Um, and he's saying that'll usually get you back to about 15 to 16 again, which is perfectly fine. Um, 18 to 20 is better than OE, and about as tight as you want the valve or the pin in your case to be, anything higher than 20 makes me nervous 25 is completely sealed with no leakage and is a stuck valve. In the 20 range, you have to take into consideration warpage of the valve body as you bolt it down with a tight tolerance. If this bore flexes a little bit, 
could cause a sticky valve or even a completely stuck one. Vacuum testing is one of those things you learn over time and experience. Um, and yeah, it goes on about uh, some different valve bodies. But had me concerned when I wet tested these because there was a drastic difference. And now I'm questioning whether the old case was actually one of my issues prior to explosion um, causing some shifting issues. A uh, couple other ways to do this, which this is not the way we originally did it because we did not have a good testing block, vacuum testing block. We had just some scrap materials we had laying around that we used, uh, used with the same adapters and everything, but the other one was just a solid white piece, so a little bit too small, hard to see, and the rubber we had on the bottom was not as good. So this is just uh, some clear plastic um, and some clear rubber I found on eBay and it, it happened to work out well. I'll try and post some links in the description. Uh, and well, other ways to test this would be that earplug around, yeah, earplug here. The way that we did this originally was to block off that passage with an earplug because we didn't have anything that would really seal it. And then we used a tip of whichever variety you choose in the back of the pin, which is a little bit more difficult to do. And then the last way to do this would be to set the case down on something that will seal it, which I haven't tested this, but this is a, a knee pad. I think this would work. It's pretty thick foam. You could set that, set that case upright, uh, flip it over on this and test it through the back of the pin again. Um, vacuum testing stuff we did purchase in order to aid in this. Well, I've got a bunch of random hoses, vacuum hoses. Don't even know what all these hoses are. Some different size hoses and stuff. And this is actually from two different sets of blowgun adapters. Got the rubbery one, um, all these little different flexible pieces. Um, and these are from a Mighty Vac set that was kind of hard to find. Um, they seem to work well for a variety of things, and they work on your blowgun, which is nice. The next thing to test, vacuum test in the case, right here, and don't forget this is upside down. You can see where the pin is there. Uh, this guy right here goes to that little capsule uh, over there is we'll just zoom in on it that is the third accumulator check ball capsule and that can be seen again up on top right next to where we were just looking at the pin there's the ball uh, so that you are definitely going to want to test and that we tried all these different adapters None of them really work very well for this purpose. We ended up using just a simple piece of hose that we kind of whittled the end down on to make it fit. And it, it's difficult. Um, Got to really manipulate it and make it fit in that hole in order to get it to work. But we'll go ahead and show that. So, and as I do this, just kind of, let me get this to focus, kind of force it up in there, rotate it a little bit. It doesn't work that way, so I got to turn around and I can hear vacuum leaking. That sounds pretty good. Oh, maybe not. I'm looking at my gauge and I can see it's not really sealed. Well, this, it worked uh, worked a second ago. There we go. And there we, we have some acceptable vacuum right there. So that has to get tested. You might have to fiddle with it, but 
definitely test it. And then that's the only two things we're vacuum checking. The last thing that you might be concerned about. There's another check ball at the back here for the low reverse clutch. This check ball doesn't actually seat all the way if you look at it from the inside. If I can find it at this awkward angle. Uh, hey, can you hold this case? There you go. I think you can see uh, there's two holes around it, like reliefs. This thing, when the clutch is applied, fluid comes through in, well, focus. Fluid comes through this passage and it, it goes past the ball through those two holes, but it seats the ball up against its seat. And when it releases, the ball falls back off. The reason for that is to soften the engagement of that clutch and make it exhaust faster since the ball will not be there anymore. Um, all right, can't remember if I talked about uh, one of the other checks on the case in this video or my previous attempt at it. This is my old case, the reason that I replaced it. You can see what looks like almost like it's supposed to be machined there. Uh, that is definitely not supposed to be there. That is from the center support rotating, um, either from neutral bombing, slamming it from drive to reverse, or vice versa, or the anti-thunk uh, spring that's supposed to go in here. This is the good case. And you can see it is definitely not like that. And it looks absolutely beautiful. So definitely something to look at if you're either rebuilding your transmission or looking for a replacement case. Um, and then obviously you're going to want to check this all for flatness and uh, whetstone it flat and get everything ready to go. Um, I think that's it, right? Uh, I think that's it. So just wanted to share how mainly how to vacuum test the pin and interpret your reading since there's not much info on that. So good luck.